the subconscious mind. So the uh, subconscious mind is the mind that our soul uses in the fourth dimension. And so the three dimensions, you know, are length, well, length, width, and, or height, width, and depth. Um, and so the fourth dimension is time. You know, here in the physical, we're locked into the present moment. I can't, I can't go into the future. I can't go into the past. You know, I'm just in the ever-evolving present moment. But a fourth dimensional being, which is your soul, it can move into the past and present, you know? So that's how, you know, you, you like I was saying before, you have that understanding, like the person who has the understanding of communication. The soul is able to go into the past and access that knowledge that was gained four lifetimes ago or 14 lifetimes ago, or just, you know, this previous lifetime, you know, and, and access that knowledge and wisdom and bring it back to the present for you, your conscious mind and the physical body, you know, or you can, that's how you can have precognitive dreams because the fourth dimension here is not limited by time. So you can perceive different lines of probability based upon your actions and your thoughts and your emotions and the actions and thoughts and emotions of those within your environment, these things are probable to happen. These things are likely to happen. You know, it's not, it's not certain, but it is probable and likely. You can move into the future and things in the, in the past with, you know, that's also, like I said, the Akashic Records are right here. You can go to the Akashic Records and review all of your previous lifetimes, all of your past lifetimes. You can go, you can go and research the different history of the world. Um, you know, I have a book over here on my shelf from uh, Dr. Daniel and Barbara Condren, who where they were doing a ton of uh, Akashic research and have just laid out like the history of the world. And like, I, I had known about it before I ever read this book about the inner earth. You know, a lot of people talk about flat earth and everything now, but it's mostly just a distraction. But because of that, because of that, I really don't talk about the inner earth hardly at all anymore. Um, just because it brings up a whole separate conversation that's not, purposeful to what I, I would want to bring it up for. but um but yeah there's a, it's the earth is hollow you know it's, there's an earth but anyways how the pyramids were formed the energetic beings that then got stuck here and have become who we are <laughs> you know we, where those each energetic beings came from what star systems they all came from things but any, anyways um I'm gonna be doing uh, another if you want to know that book uh look it on TikTok I'll be doing it here in the next week or two on the metaphysical book series that we got going there, but it's a, it's a really good book. I love it. I love it. I learned a lot from it. Um, but you can also do that research yourself by going into the uh, Akashic records because it's in the fourth dimension where time does not uh, have, is not a factor. It's not locked. You know, it's, you can move it just like you can freely move, you know, forward, backward, up, down here. That's how freely you can move um, in the astral. That's how you can have visitation dreams. You know, someone who has passed, there's no time needed to travel. You know, I, in order to travel to somewhere, there is no time needed to get there. So I can, I, you can be, you know, actually project and then boom, go to the pyramids of Giza, go to, go meet up with your friends. Um, you know, you can go anywhere. Someone who's passed away, they can come and visit you. Um, you know, they can visit you. They, they can sit there and set up visits with you before they ever incarnate back into a body. but they've already incarnated into the body, you know, meaning like if, if, you know, my, my dad passed away today and he incarns back into a body as my grandchild when I'm, you know, my great grandchild when I'm 90, but then when I'm, you know, and I don't, I'm, I might not know that, but then when I'm 108, you know, I have a visitation dream from him. Well, that's because time did not exist. So in between when he died today and when I was 90, he went and visited me when I was 108 even though he was born into another body when I was, you know, 98. You know, I don't know if that even made sense to you, but rewind it back, play it back, write it down. You might better understand, you know, the separation of time and how time is not so limited um, in the fourth dimension. But anyways, let's get on to the duty of the subconscious mind. I mentioned it earlier. The duty of the subconscious mind is to fulfill the desires of the conscious mind. Like I said, all of our thoughts are being thrown into this mental level here. So imagine this is just like, like oh, this is your whole yard, but this space right here is the garden. You know, if you're not tending to your thoughts, you're not tending your garden, then, you know, anything's liable to grow. It doesn't matter. You know, if you have a garden full of weeds, 
It doesn't matter what seeds or how many seeds you throw in there. None of them are going to, you know, come to fruition because there's weeds. There's strong weeds just all over. You know, if you go into a random field and you try to plant, you know, a seed down into it, it's not going to grow. Those weeds are going to suck out all the nutrients and that seed is going to grow. Now, if you pull the weeds out and you till the ground, you know, prepare the soil for the seed, then it will grow, you know, but everything here, you know, everything here that gets thrown in here, the subconscious mind has to filter that out and determine what to give its, its nutrients to, what to grow. Just like, you know, any part of the earth, any spot of the earth, the earth has to determine out of everything that's landed here, what all do I decide to grow? You know, like anybody who's ever had um, like an oak tree in their yard knows that, you know, every once in a while, you know, that oak tree is dropping acorns all over the place, all over the yard. But acorn, you know, they only sprout into little small oak trees every so often, every few places. You know, it's not, it's not just everywhere, you know, even though acorns are falling all over. Yeah, squirrels are picking some up, but there's still plenty of, you know, universe is abundant. There's still plenty of acorns left. Uh, from the animals and everything that's still on the ground and, and getting stomped into the ground and, and planted into the all around this oak tree, but only so many are actually growing. That's just the same thing. You know, the earth has to decide what to, what to grow, you know, so the subconscious mind has to determine what it wants to grow. That's why I was saying earlier, how often you think that thought and, and how strong and palpable and vivid that image, that thought image is, is going to, help the subconscious mind identify oh this is what i need to cause to grow this is what we want to manifest you know because it's going to overpower that unconscious thought that's can you know on on like continuing on on and on on a cyclical motion within your mind you know so you know the the duty of the subconscious mind is to manifest the thoughts and desires of the conscious mind but you know, you have to help the subconscious mind understand which ones you want, you consciously want it to manifest because otherwise it'll just be, you know, a lot of times what we unconsciously are thinking, you know, and that's what gets manifested, which a lot of times for us, especially here in America is, is what we're programmed to think, what we're programmed to believe, you know, because a program runs in the background. A program is always running, you know, like right, right, right now, I got all these different little programs that are just running while we're doing this. It's just running in the background, you know? So in the mind, the mind, the same thing, if I'm programmed to think in a certain way, it's just always running in the background. So that's, that's why the programming is so important because what you program your mind to do is going to help determine what's going on unconsciously, what's unconsciously going on in the back of your mind, which will influence what the subconscious mind decides to manifest for you. So, from that, let's go to the purpose of the subconscious mind. Purpose of the subconscious mind is to store the understandings built through the experiences of the conscious mind. Like we said, the purpose of the conscious mind is to learn from the, you know, the duty is to have the experiences and the purpose is to learn from those experiences. But once we have the understandings from the learning, what do we do with them? We have to have a place to store them. That's the purpose of the subconscious mind is having a place to store those understandings. And because we have all that understandings of all these lifetimes, all of that knowledge we have, that's why the power of the conscious mind is intuition, you know, your intuitive sense, you know. So um, any questions here on subconscious mind?